now we will have a look at vertical projections now a vertical means up or down and a vertical projection just means some object is thrown up into the air or somehow projected up into the air it will reach a maximum height and then it will start falling back towards the earth okay obviously we know that what goes up must come down and there is a very basic thing that we then therefore know that if something comes up, goes up and then has to come down at some point it must stop moving now whenever something stops moving its velocity at that point will be zero okay now before we get into all of this it's very important to notice now that there are two directions involved here there's upwards and there are downward directions and because of this we need to from the very beginning choose a direction to be positive so choose a direction to be positive okay now that's very important and you should just stick to it once you've done so so for example if we choose upwards to be positive then you'll notice the following so let's say upwards is positive and let's have a look at this whole scenario with that in mind so here we go here we have an object that is projected upwards and then it starts going downwards again okay. now when we have an object that goes up it means that it must have an initial velocity that is not equal to zero if it was equal to zero it wouldn't have moved and then if I let go it will only drop downwards so its initial velocity will not equal zero and whatever that initial velocity is it will be bigger than zero because it is projected upwards and we chose upwards to be positive but because acceleration this time is still downwards it means acceleration will be negative 9,8 meters per second squared that means for every second my velocity will lose 9.8 meters per second and as it loses velocity eventually its velocity will be equal to zero it will stop moving so eventually there will be a final velocity or a future velocity is maybe easier to look at it as a future velocity equal to zero and then it will start falling back down again that means that the velocity at this point anywhere during the part where it's going downhill will be a downward velocity and therefore future velocity will now be less than zero it will now be negative when I get to the point where I launched it so where I threw it up in the air when I get back to this point this future velocity here will be equal to the initial velocity so for example if I throw a ball up in the air <laughs> bending backwards throwing a ball up in the air it goes up into the air and comes back down when it reaches my hands it is traveling at the same velocity it was traveling when I threw it up in the air so the velocity it has when it's launched is the same velocity it has when it reaches the point from where it was launched the only difference is that this velocity will be in the opposite direction so future velocity will have a negative value because it is positive upwards negative downwards if it continues to fall further down so for example this time I might be standing on a ledge throwing something up in the air and this time when it falls it falls further than the point from where I launched it that means that the velocity here will actually be greater than the initial velocity but in the negative direction 
Now with all this in mind, I think we can go ahead and start some questions. But just before we do, let's just recap. In these questions, we will have initial velocity, but initial velocity will not be equal to zero, but indeed, if we choose upwards as positive, it will be greater than zero. We will have future velocity. There's two, uh, or actually three things to consider. If I have future velocity at the maximum height, in other words, when it is thrown and it reaches its maximum height and then starts going down. So let's call this a future velocity at max x, max delta x will be equal to zero. The future velocity when it reaches the point from where it was launched. So let's call that the future velocity at um, let's call that future velocity back. In other words, the future velocity when it is back from where it started, that future velocity will be the same as initial velocity, but with a negative because it's in the opposite direction. And finally, future velocity after, in other words, if it falls further than where I launched it from, this future velocity will be greater than the initial velocity that it was launched with, but it will have a negative because it will be in the negative direction. Okay, so that is the velocities. We know that acceleration stays constant at 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, the only difference is it depends whether upwards or downwards is positive. Then we have change in displacement. Now here is very important to notice that the change in displacement is measured from where it was launched. If I have, if I want to calculate the maximum height, that will be the change in displacement. However, if it falls down further, then this portion will be the change in displacement. In other words, change in displacement will not take into account the whole path because remember it's displacement it's not distance if therefore they we want to calculate this whole distance we are going to have to break our question up in two where we first calculate this displacement and then calculate that displacement and add the two together to get this distance from the maximum height to where it might have fallen then finally we have change in time and change in time as always is our independent variable that is usually given so that we can calculate values associated with it. Well, let's go and have a look at a few examples. 